Hi, I'm Glenn Whip with the Los Angeles Times. Boardwalk Empire concluded its fourth season this year. One of the great additions to the show, Jeffrey Wright joining us today. Jeffrey, good evening, I guess, from Berlin. Uh, yeah, guten Tag. <laughs> guten Tag. So, Boardwalk Empire, golden age of television. This is like your first kind of foray, finally. What took you so long to, to enter this enter TV? I mean, everybody's jumping ship, right? Well, I think I was reasonably busy uh, right. <laughs> without <laughs> without having uh, jumped into uh, to that uh, that side of things. But um, as well, you know, there are not a lot of uh, of shows out there. Well, there are more now, but not not haven't been a lot of shows out there in the uh, not too recent past of the quality of Boardwalk. Uh, uh, and I, you know, there's a you know a lot of great. It's become uh, you know, something of a, you know, a new uh, venue for writers now, this long-form dramatic uh, series. And so in Boardwalk is right at the center of that, um, you know, that development. And so what's what attracted me to this was, one, all the great work that had been done in the previous seasons that I could kind of, uh, you know, uh, ride the coattails of, but also uh, this, uh, this uh, incredible writing and uh, uh, and and the development of uh, this character just drew me into um, into a really wonderful uh, uh, kind of creative space I, I I don't I don't know that I've been you know more satisfied with uh, you know with words and with stories and with ideas that I've been given than I was last year with boardwalk and dr. Narcisse um, so you know, if uh, if every opportunity to do TV um, is as attractive as this one, I you know I would have been there <laughs> long ago, and will be there in the future. And your character, Doctor Narcisse, really went on quite a quite a journey this year, starting sort of like the alpha dog, uh, crime lord Harlem, and ending it in a very different place. Yeah, it was um, you know. Quite a steep uh, ascent, and you know, and even <laughs> more abrupt uh, descent for him, which uh, which was done in a way that was uh, obviously he, well. He wasn't you know killed physically, but he underwent this you know kind of uh, you know ass uh, spiritual assassination. Uh, that I thought was was very fitting, and, and also gave him gave him an opportunity, perhaps to attempt to resurrect himself uh, in the next uh, season, the one that we started filming uh, filming um, you know this past couple of months, but uh, or at least uh, you know gives him an opportunity to try to survive uh, you know the, the the implications of all his uh, his handiwork last year. So. Um, yeah, it was quite a you know quite a quite an quite an arc for him. That's interesting that you say that because I would guess from the character that becoming an informant would be a very difficult thing for him to kind of reconcile within himself. Yeah, I think from the beginning of the uh, last season, he uh, presents himself as. A man of principle. Mm -hmm. His own personal uh, understanding and justification of how those principles manifest themselves in the world, but he still considers himself a principled man. And he also, uh, in relationship to Chalky, sees himself, uh, as he describes, as you know, as something, someone regal, as a king, relative mm -hmm. to Chalky's servant. And at the end of, you know, his, uh, you know, his narrative uh, journey, um, he finds himself uh, having become exactly what he has disdained at the beginning. So, uh, I think it's a, you know, profound um, undermining of everything that he, you know, he, you know, he proposed himself to be and aspires to be. So, a pretty deep cut. Yeah. Um, 
And actually, within the historical context, even though this is kind of a, he's a speculative character, it's speculative uh, fiction, it slots in very well um, with the historical context provided by his association with uh, the uh, Marcus Garvey and the Garveyite movement. I thought it was intensely clever mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and, and very satisfying, you know, despite certain people's uh, misgivings mm -hmm. about that relationship. I thought the relationship was his relationship between Garveyism, him being a scoundrel, <laughs> and Garvey not. But I thought that that relationship provided um, a wonderfully uh, bright, dramatic uh, foil for his, for his uh, his villainy, and um, and the the circle was really completed very um, uh, very nicely and very um, and in a very organic way by you know his uh, you know his being undone by the who, what what who may have been the biggest gangster of that era, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. at least was at the beginnings yeah. of his journey into that. And that's always been kind of one of the interesting things about the show is sort of seeing these fictional characters butting up against the, their historical counterparts and how, the sh you know, the, the interesting things the show does with that. And your character was, yeah, very much part of that this season. Yeah, that's... Um, there's a lot of care given uh, to, to those decisions and a lot of research behind those decisions. And... Uh, and 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 uh, the choices were uh, treated with a good deal of respect. Um, for me, um, it only further heightened, um, you know, the um, you know the, the nefariousness of of Narcisse. Um, but at the same time, in that it was, you know, had this historical relevance, uh, I thought, you know, it was accurate for the times and also accurate uh, today that, you know, there are, there were, uh, are now, and unfortunately will uh, forever be charlatans uh, among us who, you know, purport publicly to be one thing and uh, behind the scenes and within are, are you know something quite the opposite and you know the, there are those who who uh, who use for political ends and you know personal ends you know the good works uh, 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 you know of us that are implied by an association with a certain movement or a certain group uh, as a means to uh, you know to infiltrate uh, you know themselves into the public uh, domain for selfish ends so I think he's a very familiar character, I, and I and I think uh, perhaps that <laughs> that may have been part of the reason that uh, certain people were kind of uncomfortable, made uncomfortable by him, but also why I think you know more uh, more more folks were were drawn to to him and uh, and uh, and intrigued as I was, you know, by uh, uh, the complexity of you know of his of his makeup. You talked some about coming into the show, um, very much well-oiled machine, um, just pros, pros doing the doing great work. Is there any kind of right of initiation for a uh, Boardwalk Empire newcomer? For me, uh, I think the right of initiation was sitting around the first table read uh, and slotting in. Because I think if you don't slot in, <laughs> in terms of, uh, you know, kind of uh, matching the level of work that's, uh, you know, that's been established there, uh, then you don't have a job for very long <laughs> and you might find yourself with, uh, you know, uh, you, you might find uh, that your character has uh, suddenly um, <laughs> come to... Uh, you know, a very grisly and uh, <laughs> an unpleasant end. Um, so uh, once we gathered around the table for that first read, uh, and I found my way into the character and into uh, into uh, 
you know the, the space created by all the other actors and the writers I know that was that was my right of you know right of initiation and right of passage um, I was I was I was a little concerned um, because there's just such immaculate work uh, that has been done there led by Steve Buscemi but everyone uh, uh, you know uh, Michael Kenneth Williams uh, Michael Shannon, uh, uh, you know, everyone, uh, Shea Wiggum, I'm going to leave mm -hmm. people out, um, uh, you know, uh, Gretchen Maul, but everyone is, uh, you know, is doing such delicate, um, specific, textured work that's, uh, that's underpinned by this exquisite writing and, you know, masterful production design and, you know, and these uh, costumes that, you know, um, you know uh, that you know to just you know make us all look you know much more suave and together right. than we than we actually are. Uh, that you know it was you know it was somewhat daunted uh, coming into it, but but uh, found that everyone works together in a really uh, you know really uh, you know some, uh, mutually supportive way, and just go after it and and you know and tell these stories, you know. But all of that stuff serves uh, you know serves the performance, though. I always say. You know that that you know ninety five percent of a performance is uh, is uh, you know sh uh, shoes and hair. You know, <laughs> so if you get that right, you know you you know you you're pretty much home. <laughs> and they do it they do it better than anybody there. It is funny that you say that earlier though about it is it is the kind of show that if if they weren't necessarily pleased with with your work, they could quickly uh, change the arc of the character. Um, and uh, he'd be gone, you know, sooner than later, right? <laughs> Quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they would do it with glee, with, with pleasure. <laughs> Although, you know, they did have an idea, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Terry Winter, Howard Corder, uh, they have, uh, you know, a sense uh, early on of, uh, you know, what a character's sweep is going to be and how, you know, they'd like him a new character, but they'd like him to, uh, you know, to dovetail tail with, you know, the other narratives. I think they know where they want to begin and and where they want to go. It's the getting there that becomes somewhat improvisatory, but also uh, really satis satisfying uh, uh, for an actor because I've I felt and I and, and in that I had never been in uh, in uh, you know television series like this before. I felt that there's a real kind of collaboration between kind of a silent co collaboration working between uh, you know we uh, performers and uh, and uh, you know be between us and the and, and the writers that um, you could feel that there was a kind of give and take happening. That each performance that you gave weekly was informing uh, the the writing for the next week and that. Uh, you know, uh, and and as well, you know, uh, I was, uh, you know, obviously greatly informed by, um, you know, the nuances of the, you know, the writing that was that was being, you know, being given me. So, really, really, un, you know, new, unique, but really gratifying uh, dynamic between actor and writer that, you know, only probably only exists to that extent in, you know, in a television series such as this. Now you're in Berlin now. Um, shooting a little movie called Mockingjay Part 2, part of the Hunger Games, uh, the final chapter in the Hunger Games, I guess. Yeah. Yes, that, that's correct. We, we more or less finished filming on, I guess we have finished filming on Mockingjay uh, Part 1, at least I have, so the remainder of my work is on, uh, is on Mockingjay 2. And so we've got about uh, a little over a month left. Right. Uh, but yes, filmed here in Berlin, uh, I'm in my my handsome trailer here in the uh, parking lot parking lot outside Tempelhof Airport, which is the great uh, uh, Spirian, um, you know, massive uh, Leviathan of a building uh, that uh, once served as uh, you know an airport to the uh, uh, to the the Third Reich was to to have been the you know the gateway to you know all of Europe. It's a pretty incredible mm. structure and a pretty powerful uh, uh, you know piece of architecture. And so we're here filming. Yeah. Yeah. 
going into um, Catching Fire, I, I understand that you hadn't read the book. You said you were like one of three people on the on the movie that hadn't read the series. Um, having been through it now, um, and just the level of intense um, scrutiny and 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 passion for the series. I mean, what what was your experience like? Well, I I don't know if I was I, I wasn't I was one of the you know three people in the you know in the U.S. who hadn't seen the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> let alone, yeah. let alone uh, read the books. I think um, yeah, there were you know one or two others on set uh, you know who hadn't either. wasn't full you know I wasn't fully aware of the uh, of the uh, you know the the scope of this thing uh, you know. Uh, Phil Hoffman and had said the uh, said the same that he, you know he uh, you know hadn't been aware until asked to be a part of it. But um, uh, quickly learned, um, you know that this was a pretty um, pretty singular uh, project to be a part of, and and like the Boardwalk Empire uh, experience for me, I was coming into a setting that had already been. Uh, wildly successful, and was a function of the work of uh, artists uh, uh, other than myself. And it was, you know, m you know, on the invitation of the of the production, I was asked to come in and try to <laughs> at least not uh, detract from all that good work, but you know, try to slot in and maybe even add a, you know, a little bit here and there. So. Um, um, very challenging, considering how successful the piece was and how beloved the yeah. you know the piece uh, was. Not only the books. I mean, people have a more personal relationship with this material than anything uh, I've been a part of, and you know, been a part of some projects that had uh, you know uh, that were had a you know passionate following. But this is is unique, I think, particularly because uh, it's work that speaks so deeply to you know to younger uh, you know. Uh, Formative minds, and they find a way of latching, um, you know, this deep sense of idealism and uh, latching their aspirations to these characters and to these stories and to these ideas in a way that's very precious. And so, um, I did find it, um, you know, find it it as well, fairly daunting, you know, uh, dynamic to step into, but ultimately intensely gratifying. gratifying. We're get, uh, yeah, because, we're getting a lot of questions on Twitter about Mockingjay, <laughs> as you can imagine. And one one is yeah. interesting. You mentioned the young adult readers. There's there's a question. What do you think young adult readers can learn most from BT's motivations in Mockingjay? Well, you play. And maybe it, talk about your character just a little bit for the for the three people who don't know. <laughs> yeah, BT. Uh, is an, uh, you know is a a technology uh, uh, savant. Mm -hmm. He's uh, been responsible for uh, the development of a lot of the technology that was used by the capital to enforce its um, its control over uh, the outer districts. And so. And he's also a previous victor of the Hunger Games, so he's in Catching Fire, of course, has to come back and participate again in the Quarter Quell. Uh, and the Quarter Quell is used as a foil to uh, launch a rebellion against uh, against the capital, and BT is one of the uh, 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 one of the members uh, of uh, of that rebellion. And so now, what we find in Mocking Jay is that um, you know <clears throat> this. Uh, this world, this uh, society, this cosmology that's been created by the first two books, the, the social order, the political order, um, the, the, the relationships, the familial order uh, uh, that's been created over those two uh, books and two movies is now completely undone. Uh, is, uh, you know, is... is uh, is now set ablaze, and so uh, through mocking Jay, uh, uh, what's attempted is to deal with the uh, the ramifications of that uh, society at war, 
uh, not even the metaphor of war, but at you know, you know, profound uh, you know violence and unrest, and you know, where do these characters now find themselves? What does the rebellion mean for it, for each of them? How do they compromise? Uh, you know who they are uh, as they undertake you know this um, you know this revolution this violent revolution and some survive uh, with their characters intact others don't others are compromised in ways that um, are uh, I think perhaps typical of uh, of uh, an experience such as that when you know you're asked to uh, when in, when in some ways there's a, there's a temptation to become the very thing that you uh, you're attempting to overcome uh, and uh, so I think BT finds himself uh, wrestling with those temptations simply because he's tasked with uh, now being um, at the helm of developing weaponry Mm. To uh, uh, to confront uh, you know the capitals uh, you know the capitals uh, uh, force forces so it's a you know it's a journey that's um, you know that's um, I think uh, you know internally challenging for him. There's quite a few people asking. It, I mean, is there something about BT that that you like the most? What what is it that you dig about the character? I think he's got a sense of purpose. He has a, you know, he has a sense of um, of uh, of clarity about his response to this unjust society and to the, um, you know, the oppression of the capital. And I think he's very clear. Uh, and I think he's. You know, he responds. Uh, he's outraged, but responds through uh, his work, and he feels a responsibility. He feels, uh, uh, as this kind of master uh, scientist technician, to apply his work uh, in support of the rebellion. But um, I think, at the same time, at least to my mind, he there's a sensitivity about him. Uh, that that's that's uh, that conflicts with you know, the um, the brutality of uh, you know of his work, mm -hmm. and so. Um, but I do appreciate that he feels a sense of responsibility as a citizen um, to um, you know to attempt at least to act responsibly um, on behalf of uh, you know of his. Uh, of his uh, of his fellows, and you, you mentioned the boardwalk cast. I mean, the this the cast for these movies just fantastic, both young and old. They've done a really great job and in kind of interesting choices and in mixing, you know, and casting casting these movies. It's kind of funny that you say that. Is again, you're coming into another thing that's up and running and and working with all these uh, these great people. Yeah, I cheat. <laughs> you know, let them test the waters. You know, what's the temperature? How is it? Nice. Okay, I'll join you. Well, you know, uh, yeah, it's this is a, a wonderful cast, obviously led by by Jennifer, by Jennifer Lawrence, um, who um, you know who is the focal point of these stories, uh, and the and 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 the and the the stories are told from, you know, from uh, from her perspective, and so she's in practically every scene, and she's in you know practically every scene that I've you know been involved in uh, over these you know past uh, three movies, and fortunately she is just uh, you know beyond being an a intensely interesting. Um, actor, she's also uh, just uh, a riot, <laughs> and, <laughs> and one of the funniest, one of the funniest people you will, um, you know, you'll ever hope to meet. And so it's a great, uh, you know, we have a great time working together, um, all of us, the ensemble. You know, we all, you know, try to uh, 
you know, try to bring our best work, but also our, you know, our best humor uh, to the process. And so when you're talking about doing, you know, as I have, uh, you know, now two and a half movies um, with the same uh, group, two and a half epic uh, movies, you know, it, 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 uh, it's, uh, makes it all the, you know, all the more, more bearable and all the more enjoyable that um, you all, you know, enjoy each other's company. Uh, you all, uh, you know, have a good time together. We have a question on Twitter from uh, Griff Newson who's wondering, well, what was the funniest sort of on-set moment from either Catching Fire <laughs> or Mockingjay? Uh, today? <laughs> I can tell you today. Yes. Uh, today was... Uh, I don't think I... <laughs> <laughs> now you're having second it. thoughts. I'm having second thoughts about disclosing disclosing the the nature of the conversation uh, that uh, that that we found ourselves uh, uh, delving into today. But trust me, it was it was uh, it was hilarious, but not for public um, public uh, disclosure. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, leave a little hey, mystery. we'll just no, leave a little mystery. Yeah. Mystery. It's, sorry, man. All um, right. It's you know, it's just everything's. It, it's just it's just the entire thing is a running gag. Um, <laughs> and I imagine, and we have another question. I mean, you you sh you're in Berlin now. You were in Paris before. There's a question from my niece Cardia. Uh, obviously, the being on location in these places must add. A lot to the to the movies. Yeah, certainly. Um, we have an opportunity to, uh, you know, with the the scale of these movies, um, to explore, you know, whole you know, regions of the world. First movie uh, was largely filmed in Atlanta, uh, or Catching Fire for my first movie was largely filmed in Atlanta, and then also Hawaii. And Hawaii has these specific, you know physical characteristics that you just can't recreate in a studio um, unless you're, you know, you know, I don't know, uh, to, you know, to, to have divine powers. So um, uh, Hawaii became very much a character um, uh, in the arena uh, setting that you had this beach environment also, you know, bordered by this, you know, thick um, uh, rainforest, you know, jungle environment. You just, you know, uh, uh, and the convenience as well in terms of logistics to be able to support, you know, a film like this um, was was uh, you know was 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 available there. So, um, uh, so yeah, unique setting. Now, you know, we just left Paris uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, shooting uh, in the, uh, at, at on the grounds of the chateau. Mm. Um, in uh, out about an hour outside the city, that was uh, serving as um, you know, uh, 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 you know a, kind of uh, providing this sense of grandeur uh, that uh, you know that one might expect in the capital. So there's just these these you know, these unique environments. This uh, building just outside the trailer here. Uh, is unlike any other building in the world, and uh, the scale of it, and uh, uh, the uh, the characteristics of it, um, I think suit the suit um, the, um, the the characteristics characteristics that we're trying to you know trying to articulate um, you know within parts of this uh, the story very well. And now I'm becoming even more cryptic. <laughs> and kind of meandering because I realized that I probably shouldn't be giving too much away here. So um, excuse my, um, you know, my, uh, my my vagueness. Well, maybe we better just kind of end this right now and and <laughs> say yes. thank you for uh, taking some time uh, from filming the movie to talk to us about Boardwalk Empire and the uh, and Mockingjay Part One and Two. Uh, it's been well, great talking thank to you. you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care.